Hello, here I am. My name is Linda Dolpy and um, if you're watching me, you're actually watching not a live. It's actually pre-recorded ahead of time. But as you're watching, it is Friday evening at 7.30 p.m. here on Sydney time. I actually don't live in Sydney. I live about 90 minutes north of Sydney, off the coast. Um, but it's still driving distance. And so Sydney time is the easiest to work with because everyone kind of knows where that is. Um, but I'm on the east coast of Australia for anyone who doesn't know that. Um, the nice thing though is that I come here every Friday night and every Sunday night and we have the most wonderful community of awesome, awesome listeners and watchers who uh, pop in and say hello and I would encourage you to do that even tonight, even as I'm pre-recording this because you guys can still talk to each other. So if I am able, I will try and pop on during the live in the comments. So look out in case I'm able to do that. But I'm actually driving this afternoon. We're driving to Tamworth um, to visit my, my dad um, and our wider family this weekend. Um, my dad is having his 90th birthday next week. And this weekend we're celebrating with him. So we're heading up there and spending a bit of family time. So that's why I'm not live with you tonight. But we're going to do something kind of fun. Um, I have um, a beautiful friend. Her name is Susan Canfield. Um, many of you know this already. And once a month, she does a Craft a Noon pro, uh, event, which is very similar to my Craft Along event. So I do. I call mine Craft Along, and it's where I do a live public event. Anyone can watch. Um, and then I have other alternative tutorials available after that particular recording. Um, and Susan does a similar thing in the US. Hers is called Craftoon. She does usually fun fold cards, um, and she'll do a different fold each month. And um, you can watch her live. And the one she did this month was called the Book Jacket Fold. Okay, it's a book jacket fold card. And I'm actually going to recreate that tonight, but with metric measurements, because obviously, being in Australia, we work normally with metric rather than inches. But if you prefer inches, then I would recommend that you watch Susan's video. Okay, Susan has um, a fabulous YouTube channel with lots and lots of different types of cards on her channel and her measurements are in inches. So um, if that suits you better, you might like that. In the meantime, though, you can get an idea of the project from me here tonight. And as I said, it's called the Book Jacket Fold and I'm going to be recreating it with some bits and pieces that I have. I've got Susan's tutorial here. <laughs> Um, she does amazing tutorials that you can actually purchase if you wish. But um, in the meantime, I'm going to be creating a card that um, is using her measurements. And I'm going to use some new products to do that. So that's cool. It's very weird for me to talk to you and um, not get feedback immediately like I normally do on a Friday night and Sunday night when we're talking to each other. So it's very strange. Um, and I'm sure you find it strange too when you listen to me talking and thinking, well, you know, obviously I'm not waiting for a response. It's very odd. Anyway, let's switch over to the desk and have a look at these new products that I'm talking about because they were released yesterday and this is the beginnings of them. Some of you have seen me start to use them in the last couple of weeks. The bundle is called the One Horse Open Sleigh Bundle or Collection. Um, and it is number, there's four products. Okay, there's some beautiful snowflakes here in and they're adhesive so you don't have to go looking for glue dots to stick them on they're fabulous um the paper the which i'll come back to the horse and sleigh stamp set and the matching horse and sleigh dies that cut out some of these images and also um have a couple of standalone dies as well so let me show you those All right so this one is a standalone then there's a couple of other standalone ones like these but then the outline ones actually cut out the stamped images so I love them. I think they're fantastic. I've been using them a lot already. Um, and tonight we're going to use them to make Susan's book, book jacket fold card. So let me show you the one I've already kind of prepared, almost finished. All right. So this is the book jacket fold card. You can see when I stand it up how it sits. It's got like a, um, a square folded edge here on the corner. Um, and then it opens up like a book jacket. Okay, so can you see how that would work? Um, and I'm going to show you, give you all the measurements for this in metric. Um, so 
um, I'm sure Susan's going to be telling her audience if people prefer metric to come and look at this video. And um, of course, if you prefer inches, you might want to go check out hers. But in the meantime, I've used the Lace Shop Suite for this particular card. Um, and I'm going to add a couple of things to that. We'll finish that card off. And then I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to give you all the measurements for this. Um, and I have, you'll get one card out of a single sheet of um, our A4 cardstock. And so what you want to do to start is we want to cut our A4 cardstock in half exactly. So that's at the 14.8 centimetre mark. So I'm going to be going here at 14.8. And that gives me two exactly the same size pieces. All right, just like so. Then we need to cut them slightly different. We have one that we're going to cut at, I'm going to extend my arm of my trimmer out, okay, and I'm going to do one at 17 centimetres and the other slightly longer at 18.5, like so. All right, so I've got a slightly longer one. Can you see that one's a little bit longer than the other? All right. Okay, so I'm going to start with the 17 centimetre, the smaller piece. Okay, this is actually going to form um, the, the folded jacket part of the card. And you're going to start by, I use, you can use your Simply Scored tool or you can use your trimmer, either one. I'm going to put this at the one centimetre mark. Okay, so the end of my cardstock is sitting at that one centimetre mark. Just make sure that your paper is straight in there. Get your cutting blade out of the way. And we're going to use our scoring blade to make a one centimetre score from top to bottom. Okay. And then we're going to score again at the three and a half centimetre mark. 3.5. Then six. Then eight and a half. So I'm putting my end of my cardstock at the mark I'm telling you, the eight and a half mark in this case. All right. So I hope you can see this is actually the light here today is not fabulous. Um, let me just see if I can brighten it up a tiny bit for you. Just going to open up the blind on my window and see if that gives us slightly better light. Maybe a little. And... Try brightening up my overhead lights and see if I can get those to be brighter. Is that a little better? Maybe? My overhead, um, the light that I normally have on over the desk isn't working how I'd like, but I think that is a little bit better. All right. Okay, so I hope you can see these score marks so i've got one one centimeter and then remember three and a half six and eight and a half so these three are two and a half centimeters apart each which is roughly if you were going to do it in inches of roughly an inch okay and this one is one centimeter here on the end so what i'm going to do just move that out of the way for a second is i'm going to fold those and i'm going to use a bone folder to make sure i get a really good crease really good fold Okay, so now can you see these all fold the same way? They're all a mountain fold, if you like. Um, and then eventually they're going to fold around to score this, to, to form this square here, which is the front of my book jacket fold. Okay, now the other piece that I've got left over here, okay, this is the, um, the longer piece. I'm going to score this with the scoring blade again at the seven and a half centimeter mark okay and this is going to be the back part of my fold all right so when this goes together this is going to be glued into place i hope you can see it from above there this piece is going to go onto the back here and this flap is going to fold over okay so that's kind of i hope giving you an idea so the first thing we need to do is we need to grab ourselves i find tearing tape is the best thing for this okay now, you could start to decorate this before you put it together, and you may find that easier, but 
I'm just going to put it together at this point so you can get the basic shape. I'm putting a piece of tear and tape on this edge here. Okay. And then what you'll do is you'll take that backing off, right? I'm then going to bring, I'm going to hold that in place and two sections, the two, two of the two and a half inch sections, I'm going to flatten that down. So one section is at the back. I've got the two here on top and I'm going to fold that flat. So I've got two sections here. I've got one section there at the back, two here on top, and that folded piece goes over. Fold it nice and flat, and then when you stand it back up, you can see we've made that square folded shape. Does that make sense to everyone? If you have any questions about that, ask them in the comments, and I will be checking back later. All right, now this one, I just need to make sure that we've got a good strong fold here as well. This piece is going to be going now this is going to form okay if I turn this this is actually the front of the book jacket fold card it's actually going to go this way this piece here is going to be going on to here all right just like that so if you kind of get an idea if you set it up first I'm doing it slightly differently to Susan's instructions are slightly different to this but this just makes more sense to me because I'm a I'm a visual person and so I know I need to see how this is going to look. So this is going to go with the book jacket going this way. And then there's a flap here at the end. Now the flap could go on the outside or you could tuck it in. All right. So um, either way. But what I want to do is I want to put this part here is where my adhesive needs to go. All right. So if I fold this flat, okay, then this piece here, so I've got the main part of the card, I've got this small folded section. The second folded section here is where my tape needs to go. All right, so let me grab that. And I'm going to put a piece of tape along that edge there and a second edge as well because we want it on both edges so it will sit nicely. Like so. Now, remember we said this piece here is going to go onto that piece there. All right. So what I want to do is I want to have, I want to take my paper, my glue off, and then I'm going to line this up. It doesn't really matter which way you put this. I'm going to line it up so that the edge of this cardstock here goes right there to the edge of this cardstock here. And the smaller flap is here at the front. Okay. So this is the larger piece at the back. So let me take off these pieces. It's actually a very simple fold. Um, once, I, once I got my measurements and everything sorted out, it's super easy. And let's pop that down. So you're lining up that whole section there, making sure your corners are aligned. And let's pop that up. And now the basic shape of our card is done. Okay, so it's like it's like a book, all right? Does that make sense? So now we can decorate it however we like. Now let me before I start on that. Oh, here I've got my other card. This is the one I did earlier, okay? And I used some of the Les, uh, Les Shops paper um, and the Let's Go Shopping set. Okay, so Let's Go Shopping is the name of the stamp set and the dies and Les Shops is the name of the matching paper. So I actually cut this little shop out of the paper. Uh, so, you know, there's little shops and different pieces here. The ones I wanted to use, though, the reason this is actually um, this piece here, but I cut mine off the back of this paper because I wanted to have the one with the books because I thought, well, it's kind of a book-shaped card, so it makes sense to have a bookshop, all right? That's what, that's what my thinking was, and I cut my little um, bookshop here, and then I put a second story on, which was actually the top of this one here. So I could have had this little bookshop, but it's actually, isn't it nice? It's really cute. This is a bit of a smaller one, and I'm thinking maybe that would look really nice on one of these inside panels. Now, I just made these inside panels white so you could write on them if you wanted. So I think, though, it's easier to write on this one and that piece sort of opens out. So maybe this one would be a really great place to have a little, a little bookshop. 
maybe I'll have a second bookshop. I'm going to cut this out. And I love this paper. I just think this was actually one of the first things I wanted out of the new catalogue. I have a, I don't know what it is, but I love little houses and I love bookshops. Um, very often we have like a little house set in our holiday catalogue. You know, there'll be, you know, houses in the snow or there'll be houses with Christmas trees, that kind of thing. I always look for those kind of sets. I don't know why. I just love them. <laughs> And I'm just going to cut out. So they're really easy to cut out because, you know, lots of straight lines. So it makes it super easy to cut them out. So I'm cutting out the top of this one again, which is the same as this one here. And it's got a little bookstore in the bottom too, but different, you know, slightly different shape. It's a narrower building. It's really cute though. And I'm just going to... Get rid of that and I'm just going to cut out the whole thing last time I just cut a line all right so I'm thinking this would look really cute inside here and the other thing that's really cute, did you notice there's like little pots here? I thought a little pot is really cute. This one's got like little chalkboards. How cute is that? I might I might have this little pot here because I like one. And maybe, maybe we'll cut out a little chalkboard as well. So basically I'm just decorating this card that is made exactly the same as the one we just made. And then in a second I'm going to decorate the other one with the new paper. And the horse and sleigh set. Whoops, sorry, I keep forgetting to be right in the camera view. I get all involved when I'm cutting. Cutting and colouring are the two things that um, I get over invested in. <laughs> and then I lose, I forget myself and I forget to be in the camera shot and all sorts of things because I'm concentrating on what I'm cutting. All right, so I'm going to pop. I'm going to pop that one here and I'm going to put it in flat because I, you know, this one's on dimensionals, but you don't need to do that. Um, let me see. I've got some seal here. This will be fine to put that in. Let's just pop that in there. How cute. And then I think we want a little, I'm going to use some, uh, maybe some mini dimensionals would be good. I'm just going to put a mini dimensional behind. Actually, I think I can pop two. Probably could have put a normal dimensional, but that's okay. And then that's going to go just here inside. Oh, that's really cute, isn't it? <laughs> There's still room to write there if you want to, but you're probably going to write here. And the other cute little thing I really liked was the chalkboard. Maybe we'll put the chalkboard on the front. This one's near the edge, so we'll just use that one. Isn't this a fun set of paper? I love it. It's so much fun. All right, let's get this. So what's everybody doing this weekend? Are you all going anywhere? Talk, you know, you're staying home. It's been pretty cold lately, so... I know the the urge to stay home is strong um, and why would anyone want to go to Tamworth, which is super, super cold in the middle of winter? Do I want to put this on the front or do I want to put it, you know, maybe on this piece here where I'm going to write? I could. I could do whatever I like. Also, I've got um, a little... Um, this is from the Scallop Contour dies, and I thought that might be nice to stamp because we've got some. See, we've got little pots here too. You could, if you don't have the paper, you could cut out a little pot. You could make your own little shops and color them in. Paper is just a quick, easy way of doing it. But you know, there's a little chalkboard here. There's some really great little sayings. I'm thinking maybe let's get, let's get together would be nice. There's a wish you were here. You're such a sweet treat, which would go nice with your little capes and patisserie kind of shop. So let me, let me grab the Let's Get Together because I think that's the stamp I use most out of this set. It's a really 
it's a really cool little stamp let's get together and I'm thinking what color I think I could go black but I'm actually thinking maybe hmm navy or perhaps misty moonlight so let's or we could go with calypso coral although that's a lot of coral because we've already got the coral calypso coral base I'm just seeing if this is dark enough because this is mm, yeah it's all right so let me get that straight on there let's get together and let's pop that there we could stick it right in the middle or yeah I think right in the middle in this case because my house is in the middle and I think it might look weird if I have the same to one side but anyway it'll be fine one two and let's pop that right there the nice thing about stripy paper actually is it's really easy to see if you're not straight because the stripes kind of do that work for you. There we go. And I'm going to add this little guy on a dimensional as well. Just like that. And then I've got some more of this paper there on the spine as well. So the measurements for this, I'll, I'll show you as we make this one up. Um, what the measurements for the paper are that's isn't that a cute little card I really like it I think it works really well and then when you open it it's like an extra surprise inside super cute super cute all right okay let's I've got some this is Lost Lagoon the color I'm using here and the reason I went with Lost Lagoon was because um, there is quite a bit of Lost Lagoon and those kind of colours in my paper here. So you've got kind of a mix of the true blues, which is like Misty Moonlight, Night of Navy, all that kind of stuff. There's a little bit of red, which does some nice things as well. Um, we've got some wood grain. It's beautiful paper. This is so lovely. Um, we have Pecan. This colour is called Pecan Pie. It's like a softer version of Soft Suede, which we had before, and that has retired. But I'm going to be going through and pulling out more of the um, the Lost Lagoon and greeny cut, uh, shades. So that would be, let me see, let's pull a couple out. There's that one, which might be really nice actually. I like the little cottage there on the front. There's this one, which has got Pool Party and Lost Lagoon in it. That's really nice. And there's, and we could also go into the creams and beiges as well, which would be nice also. And then there's this one. See, these are all Lost Lagoony kind of colours. They'll go really nice with these this uh, colourway. So let me let me start with those couple and think about what I'd like to have on the front. Oh, it's a tough decision, isn't it? So if I wanted to have the little, I think maybe the little cottage on the front would be nice. Or gosh, it's tough tough decision. We could also have the big tree. We could also add a little bit of our sleigh if we wanted to. All right, let me go with this one. Now, all right, these these measurements here, um, as I was as I was putting this together, I worked out everything, the length of everything is going to be 14.3 centimetres because our whole piece is 14.8, remember, half a piece of um, A4. So the actual measurements of the paper you stick on top will be 14.3 long okay and then you just got different um, pieces here so for this one I'm going to go now this whole section from here to here is eight and a half so any piece you put on top is going to be eight so I'm going to come, come across and that's going to mean my my house is slightly to one side which is actually really nice I like that I don't want it to be right in the middle um, and I'm going to cut a little bit off the bottom to make it 14.3, just like this. And so this whole piece here is going to go in this section. So let's, let's pop that on. And the nice thing about this paper is the paper has these beautiful, beautiful scenes on it that do all the hard work for you. So if you don't have a lot of time to be making Christmas cards, and I understand a lot of people don't have a lot of time. You might decide 
that this paper is perfect for you for your Christmas cards this year because it's going to like it's you know it's a whole complete scene stuck straight on the front there it immediately looks good now I've got a two centimeter by 14.3 strip that is going to go on here because this strip is two and a half centimeters so that means our width of the piece that we're going to put onto this strip of cardstock is going to be half a centimeter less so two and I could I could stick with these colors or I could go and add some red to the back if I wanted to I'm wondering if that is too bright I I feel like it is I feel like it's a little bright for what I like so I've got some other pieces here we've got we've also got this red I actually prefer this one that one looks a little bit like like frosty snowy kind of can you see it it's it's really pretty I really like that one so we could pop that on but once again I feel like it's not quite right also we could go with some green because there's green here in these trees and that would also match so we've got a few choices um, I also like on the back of this paper we have some trees which is a really nice contrast as well but I have this piece left over and I'm wondering whether it might be nice just to pop a tree on the side there I think it would so let me take let me take this and I'm going to make it two centimeters wide so it's going to give us a little tree here on the side and I'm going to take hmm, I think I'll take it from the top because there's not a lot going on there at the top so I'm making it 14.3 long. Remember, that's the width of all of these pieces. And then I'm going to add this to the side. Mm, now I've done that, I don't know. I like the contrast of... I'm going to keep that piece because I think I still want to use it. But I feel like I want more contrast. So maybe I will lean towards the red. Let's see what other colours we have. We've got the pecan pie. That would be nice. That would go. And I'm just sorting through all these pieces and looking. See that there's like a red with a crosshatch design. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see it? And then mossy meadow green there. Also some, maybe some um, some wood grain might be nice. We've got the light wood grain and we've also got a dark wood grain. We've also got this mossy meadow. Oh, okay. That might be what I want. A bit more contrast, but it picks up the colour that's in these trees. That's maybe the go. So it's a toss up between that. And let me see, what about some dark wood grain? Got dark wood grain that might be too dark it's darker over this side and a little bit lighter here the lighter is nice I like the lighter part of that dark wood grain or we could go with the mossy meadow and I don't have you guys to help me tonight to make a decision which means I've got to make a decision all by myself <laughs> which is it's it's a struggle right all right so I'm going to this has got the deer on the other side isn't that the cutest deer ever He's so cute. He's got the world's biggest ears for a deer, but he's super cute. All right, so I'm going to take off a two-centimeter piece from this side because I am leaning towards the green. And I'm going to go 14.3. You're probably all yelling at me and I can't hear you because, obviously, it's pre-recording. That would look nice too, but I think I've decided on the green. I think the green is going to pull in some color from here, so I'm liking that. So decision made, and I'm sorry if you don't all agree. You can tell me off and that's okay. I'll come back and comment later. <laughs> all right, let's pop this on here. All right, so this piece, remember, was eight because the whole section is eight and a half. So we made our DSP piece eight by 14.3. This one is DSP is T. Ugh. T DSP piece is two centimeters by 14.3 okay so we've got the first couple of pieces done now I have got let me grab it a piece of oops, let's get that out of the way 
and just move everything else out of the way. I'm just pushing stuff around today. All right. Now, this piece here, okay, is going to be the same as the front piece. So let me just double check that, but it should be right. Yeah. So this piece from here to here is eight and a half, which means any panel we put in there is going to be eight. Okay. And I'm also going to put a panel here. Now, the panel here is the one I think I'd like to write on. So we know that it needs to be 14.3 high because that's the full full um, height of the card. And this piece from here to here is 7.5 because we scored it at the 7.5 mark. So that means this piece needs to be 7. Okay. So that's going to go here. And it will be a flap that comes over. And that's where I think I want to write my greeting. So I want to have something else going on here on the inside. And this is where I could put um, I could put all sorts of other things. I could put any of these colours that I've just looked at. Um, some wood grain might be nice. But I've also got this piece left over. And it is slightly, this is actually slightly narrow. But it won't matter that there's it doesn't go all the way in there. So I'm actually going to use the other half of this piece because I think that's really nice. Um, and I'm going to take this off the bottom again. So we're going to go 14.3. And I'm going to put my glue on the back. And even though this piece is slightly narrow, because it's inside here, it won't matter. So I'm going to put it, get my trimmer out of the way, it might make things easier. Open this a little and I'm going to put it so that it is got the same amount of cardstock here, here and here. And let's just put that, so it's a little bit short on this side, but it won't matter because no one's really going to open up much and look at that. If you if that bothered you, you could put a strip of something else. Or I could have moved it to this side and we could have put a strip of maybe um, like dazzle paper. That would be nice. Some of this some of this dazzle paper. Wouldn't that look lovely? We could pop that in. Very, very pretty. Now this one here is going to go here. But before I do that, I want to stamp on it. And I'm going to use my horse and sleigh set for that. Let's pop this. I haven't got the right size block, but this one will do. Actually, that's probably not bad. All right, now we can stamp it straight on or we can use our markers and give it some different colours. So I'm going to go with Mossy Meadow, seeing as we know that green is in our trees. Definitely there's quite a bit of Mossy Meadow here. And you can see the darker colour there is any of the browns. I'm going to use Early Espresso. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my trunk and I'm just going to colour straight down the middle there. Now this technique doesn't work quite as well on photopolymer stamps as it does on rubber, but you can improve, improve that um, by doing a few steps. Maybe we'll go over those on Sunday night when I'm actually live. That might be good. But you can do a few things to improve it. Like when you first get them, you can give your stamps a super light stamp. Um, I've heard people say it's a little bit of sanding, but super, super light. And in fact, you get a pretty good seasoning of your stamps, improve the quality of the surface by rubbing. If you wear jeans, rub your photopolymer stamps on your jeans before you ink them up for the first time. And that gives them a pretty good, a pretty good um, seasoning as well. I'm just looking to see if I have, here we go, I have a mat here and I'm going to pop this over. I can go over either side. I think I'll go over the right hand side. Give it a good push down. Okay, and just like that. So I've still got room to write, but I've created a tree that's going to sit on this piece here. Now remember this piece is seven centimeters wide by 14.3 long. All right, so I've got room there to write. 
and I'm just going to stick this whole panel. into my card there. Now you could just leave this like this and you could have, it's looking rather nice, isn't it, with that. And so when you fold it, it will go flat to go into an envelope, all right, so like so. But when you pull it out, it sits up. I think it's a really, really nice style of card. I love any card that sort of, sits up easily for display but um, fits into an envelope by folding flat. I love that. And I think that's what Susan had in mind when she designed this card. So such a cool idea. All right. So we're nearly done. We could just apply a greeting to this, which would be very easy to do. Um, if you wanted to, you could also, shall we do it? Yeah. Why not? Okay. I'm going to use this bit of white and I'm going to stamp I'm going to clean this off for a second I'm going to pop this on this is block I is it I? yes block I which fits the um, the sleigh quite nicely and I'm going to stamp this in memento ink it won't matter though you could actually will I go memento or will I go espresso I'm tempted to go espresso because it's not quite as harsh. And you can use any of your dye inks to colour if you're going to use blends. I'm actually only, I'm not going to use the whole thing. I'm only going to use the horsey and maybe a tiny bit of the sleigh. But the horse is what I'm really interested in. All right, just like this. Put the lid back on my... All right, so I want to use a light, I want this to be a lighter coloured horse. So I'm thinking of going with maybe maybe dark crumb cake. Maybe. Okay, I've got, hmm, I've got two. Look at that. Huh. Um, dark crumb cake and light crumb cake. So let's try that. And I'm going to do my horsey. I don't have pecan pie in blends yet. That's a, a new colour and I haven't got all the new colours yet in blends. But you can get a bit of darker shading just by going over in the same colour. Go over your work a couple of times. And then I'm going to... We're just going to give him, I'm just using, the secret of using your blends is to um, just go very, very lightly, float the tip over the paper. Um, and if the, if the um, area gets too small that you're working on, switch over to the thin end. Okay, I'm using the thicker end with the brushes at the moment, but it's any time it starts to get too detailed, switch over to the thin end. Now I'm going to I'm going to leave his nose white, I believe. And shall we go with the lighter colour for his mane? I think that's a good idea. There's he is. Tail. I'm going to leave his feet and his nose white. And I'm wondering about the, I don't even know that I'm going to worry about the sleigh. I'm just going to colour the front of it because I'm not going to use the whole thing. So I'm just with red there because, I don't know, this seems like a sleigh colour. Probably isn't. What colour, what colour, what colour is sleighs normally? All right. So I've got my dyes here. And I'm going to run this through my machine. And I'm only going to use the front of the horse and a little bit of the sleigh. I'll see if I need to colour any more. Um, but I shall just quickly run this through and it'll be back in one second. Okay. 
funny thing is that if I was doing an actual um, pre-recorded video normally, I would just, um, I would skip this part out. I would edit it so that it was instantaneous and by the magic of television, we would just have something done straight away. But because I'm recording this effectively as a live, I can't do that. So you just have to wait very patiently, and chat amongst yourselves whilst I cut my horse and sleigh. I could bring it in, that'd probably be more interesting for you, but anyway, you guys know how it goes. Because my I'm working with a portrait size, I don't want the whole thing. This is obviously way too big, but I do want to have a little horsey there and maybe just the very beginning of the sleigh so let's cut this I'm going to use my trimmer to cut it because I don't trust my cutting well I do I do trust my cutting but and I can always cut a bit more off if I want to okay so I'm just doing So it's going to be like this, just the front of the horsey. I like this. This is coming together nicely. Mind you, if I didn't like it, <laughs> I'd have two choices. I could pre-record re it, which I really don't think I have time to do, or I could um, I'm going to use, I'm going to use my Mossy Meadow blends because they're going to go with this. This is light Mossy Meadow. I'm going to use too small an area. I'm going to use my thin end. I'm just thinking, and maybe, maybe a light old olive as well. Hmm. Or pretty peacock. Pretty peacock will go. Because it's kind of goes, pretty peacock goes really, really well with Lost Lagoon. And I'm just going to have those couple of colours there like that. Now, I'm going to take a tiny, tiny bit more off the end of this. And then I'm going to line up that side that I just cut with that edge there. And I think I'll put it on dimensionals. I think that will look better. So one here. Don't ever worry about the fact that your blends come through the paper. They're alcohol uh, markers, so they are meant to go through. Um, that's just the way they work. And that's why they blend together so beautifully, because they blend into everything, including the paper. So let's pop this right here in alignment with this side. And now we have a little horse and the beginning of a sleigh going past our little house here. And then we can choose with the greetings. We have a number of greetings. The sending warmth your way, I like. I think it's, and this kind of, this would work. Or wishing you a season of cheer looks really cool as well. But you need a larger, they're a bit bigger than what they show on the cover. So you would need a larger piece for that. The word joyful, that is cute because it fits on a smaller greeting. And that's what, a smaller label. And that's what I think I'll work with today. Um, what have I got here? I've got a couple of labels. Here's one from the Cheerful Daisy set. Let's use Joyful and that'll fit on block A. That's how little it is. And I'm going to use Mossy Meadow cardstock. Sorry, ink. What am I saying? Oh my gosh. Joyful, just like that. And then I'm going to pop that up here somewhere. Now I feel like it needs a little bit of dazzle. I could do dazzle behind, but then I'm going to cover, if I was to use a circle, I would cut, it would take up too much, I think, of my trees and bits and pieces, and I'm hiding my smoke. I don't want to do that. So maybe just a little tiny smidgeny piece of dazzle. Here we go. I've got some over here. Right, so see I've got a little piece here, so let me cut that. 
Let me get this covered up before I stick my fingers in it. And I'm going to just cut a piece. I just feel like it needs some sparkle. And we'll add some snowflakes too. I mean, why not? We've got snowflakes, right? So this is going to go across the bottom. Yeah, that's nice. Across the bottom of this piece. So let me add... I've got stuff everywhere today. What is wrong with me? Seriously. And let's stick that across the bottom of this piece. All right, so now that that goes across the bottom, I'm going to turn it over, use my scissors and cut off the excess dazzle paper. And on this side as well. I love the dazzle paper. Absolutely love it. It's just so beautiful. And then that's going to go here. And I think I'll pop that on dimensionals as well. One and two. So if you're looking for quick, easy cards, then this paper is going to be your friend this Christmas. You could actually turn this 48 sheets in a pack and you could turn it in very easily into at least 48 cards, probably more because you would need an entire piece per card. So you could do all your Christmas cards out of the one, the one piece if you wanted. Okay, now let me just realign myself here on the desk and find what I do with those snowflakes. Goodness me, guys, don't take a drink. You'll be drunk by the time I'm finished with you today. Right. Luckily, I have more than one pack. They were just here on the desk. Did anyone see where I put them? Goodness me. When I, look, when I watch this back, I'll be able to see that. All right, so I'm going to use, I've got gold. This is my spare pack. So I've got some large ones. And somewhere I also have some small ones. Here you go. Here's some small ones. And I could go gold. I could go copper. But I'm thinking I might go with the white today. I think the white would look lovely. So let's grab a white one. And I love that they're adhesive. So we're going to have one here. And then a medium size one up here. And a little guy at the top of my label. Just like that. There you go. Now, the one thing I didn't put on here, I feel like I need to have one last panel on here. So let's go and do that. Um, and I'm thinking which which colour? I think maybe maybe this colour. Maybe just some nice little soft trees would be lovely there. It does need a final panel. So we know this panel is seven and a half centimetres wide, so that means it's going to be seven. Do I want this bit with the trees or just with the you know what? Let's just do it. So seven. And 14.3. Remember, that's the height always. And then this piece is going to go right here. And you could also add this too, but no, that's not what I want. Well, as soon as I finish this video, I have to go and start packing my bags. Um, my daughter's going to be here this weekend, so she's looking after the cats. But I'm thinking that um, we're going to miss them. I wonder if they'll miss us. Probably not. As long as they get fed, they don't really care. And there we go. There's our book, jacket, fold, card. What do you think? Do you like it? 
I think it turned out really nice. The paper is divine. It's absolutely stunning. I, I just love this paper. Twenty one seventy five. if you're wondering how much the paper is. Um, you get 48 sheets, 6 by 6 paper. And as you see, you can do some beautiful things with it. Um, and then the other book fold card is somewhere here on the table because I've been shoving things on top of other things all day long today. Oh, my goodness me. Seriously? Well, I did have it, as you saw before. And as soon as I finish this video, I'm going to find it again. I will post the pictures. Oh, here it is. I'll post the pictures. So here are two book, ja book jacket fold cards. That's how they look when they're standing up. Okay. And this is how they look flat. I really, really like them. I hope you like them too. I hope you enjoyed that tonight. Um, I'll be back on Sunday night with um, something else for you. Um, if something happens and we don't get back in time on Sunday night, I'll put up an announcement. But right now, my plan is to be back in time to do a live with you on Sunday. Have a fantastic weekend, guys. Stay warm wherever you are. Um, don't forget, you can come online and um, shop with me. I'm just going to put up my my blog address okay lhiggins.blogspot.com there is a shop now button right there or there'll be a shop link in the in the description below this video as well have a fantastic weekend and i'll see you hopefully on sunday night bye bye